You bought 1,300 dollars confusingly expensive phone, took it home, preparing for premium unboxing experience, only to realize that there is nothing extra inside. No charger, no case, no headphones, except cheapest USB Type-C possible, and metal pin. Incredible. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the phone. <laughs> the phone looks and feels absolutely glorious. Aluminium body with sprinkles of titanium is very nice for the touch. Fantastic device. Everything is minimalistic yet very appealing. There is nothing to add to it. It has something to draw the eye and attention of people. Why I bought exactly this phone? The reason is not what you think. I need a workhouse multi-tool for my work. This phone has some features that other like. S24 series has little to no upgrades to previous generation. And Ultra got the most new features. Also, I do not want Exynos chips from Samsung. They teased this generation as revolutionary and game-changing. New era of smartphones. I even watched their live event, Galaxy Unpacked, despite it being deeply late at night at my time. I even made three videos about it the same day. This event was just a hype, nothing major, just small improvements with old technology. But still, this phone has lots of key points that no other has at this moment in time, specifically for my niche use case. I need a device with vibrant and big bright screen to share with people outdoors and make fast notes on screen. Also multitask a lot. Look how huge it is compared to small yet comfortable phones of our past. Matte finish leaves very little to no fingerprints and glass on the screen is very resistant to fingerprints. New Gorilla Armor must be a lot more durable for scratches for a couple of hours or days until you find proper glass protector. Also, it has less glare and reflection. It reminds me of modern smart TV coatings. Let's turn this cool guy on. I like the fluidity and responsiveness of the UI. One of the features that I needed, S Pen. The ability to take notes on the fly is crucial in my workflow and it is 10 times more precise and efficient than fingers. It can transcribe it to the text in real time. The ability to multitask is unmatched on this phone. You can force any app to any place, move it, attach it to sides, change the opacity. Split screen. In my use case, it can decrease by quadra the time spent on locations and conversations with people. It leads to more work done or more free time opened for the rest. As you noticed, our intergalactic overlords shortened perception of time in all living organisms, so days became shorter inside our virtual planetary game, so no time for useless wastes, need the work to get done and go further with my life. Sidebar for quickly start most useful apps and split-screen shortcuts. Nice.
most of the things in this phone feels like convenient time savings for me. Samsung do not have the best, the most impressive cameras in the game, but the combined features and powers checks all the boxes for my work. This year they has nicely polished 3 years old touch and fixed almost all the gaps in the camera system. Five and ten times zooms are very handy. Stabilization feels good. You can even film with multiple lenses split screen or floating window. In some use cases, this will save days of humanoid lives. Also, the ability to switch between all lenses, including front selfie, is great. S Pen Can't say enough of its usefulness. It is built in the device and has integrations that you can't get with external stylus. Old Google's feature called Google Lens has been polished and inserted into UI. You can search anything on your screen by outlining it. In any app, this feature will not be exclusive to Samsung. This year they have advertised lots of features completely unrelated to Samsung and their devices as a part of S24 series advertisement. Ok, they integrated what they call AI, but in reality it is more like just smart features. I can click and remove shadows. Cool. Let's try and move this phone on the table. All this is done online on Google servers. Time of the results heavily depends on the internet connection. All these features will be on subscription in the end of 2025. I wish this all be just built into the phone. Maybe third-party apps can give us local machine learning models and features. This subscription stuff is just an advertisement gimmick for now. IE is still far from here. Samsung decides to police this feature and adds watermark to all edited photos. You can't turn this off. Ok, luckily you can remove it with object remover tool or simply crop it in. Also, the features that I absolutely love is ability to identify text on photos videos or straight from the camera app screen. You can add this text to notes or use smart recap feature or translation. Image should be clear for the best results. Finally, my 11 years old Sony phone can rest for now. I just need to open SIM card slot. Oh, this is micro SD expansion that some other $1300 overpriced 256 gigs in 2024 flagship phones do not have. Samsung, are you ok? Phone is so old and been in hell, so I have to use knives and scissors to rip it out, literally. It was a hassle, hope it still works. Let's use metal pin from the luxurious unboxing session. Of course, it has rubber gasket, because phone is IP68 water resistant. Unfortunately, it do not have 3.5mm audio water sealed port. Looks like SIM card is bent. It is broke. Guess we have to go to the carrier. Despite having huge size, it has features to use it with one hand. Very handy, to say.
can even use it almost without looking at screen. Front facing camera. I need new SIM. Let's go to Sakaria. Oh! You can switch between all lenses in 4K 60fps. Let's quickly test some photos and look at the details. I will make in-depth photo and video tests soon. Want to mention that HIF files have DCI-P3 D65 color gamut and not all apps use it properly. I had to make my own LUT to make program show true colors of the photo. That's why HIF files from Samsung can look dull and undersaturated on the internet. Portrait mode uses JPEG only and JPEG's format do not have this problem. But file sizes are double. Which phone have ability to choose color space? And enhanced features can sometimes ruin face. This is not what was in reality. This is how it were. I turned off camera optimizations. Some more selfies.
elevator room. Ability to zoom comes very handy. I can miss nothing beautiful now. Speakers are very nice, clear and loud. Let's have a fast listen. Of course, on camera mics can show true sound. Need to make proper rig on full review. But even neighbors from nearby house definitely heard this concert. Need to compare it to other devices. It's like having small portable speaker with you.
And the most important question, can it play Minecraft? Yes, it can. Let's test some games. All settings are on highest possible. Battery life. This phone has nice features. Reverse wireless charge, but it is little bit slow. 
you need at least 30% battery on device. You can manually increase this limit. Home has some features for increasing battery life long term, like limiting the charging amount or automatic mode. I will use maximum. It also has power saving mode and you can control it. Let's turn reverse wireless charging on. You can charge your smartwatches in case of need. Or earbuds or any compatible device. Nice. The first day of use. I fell asleep with Bluetooth earbuds on. In the morning there were 71%. This day I used phone for two thirds of what I usually do. Graph in the middle is just my test of car wireless charger for a couple of seconds. 5 hours of screen on time. Used some messenger apps, camera, little bit of YouTube and very lightweight use for other. From 71% to 14% with only 5 hours of screen on time. Not very impressive for now. But Samsung devices has learning usage patterns for a couple of days. It should slightly impress when it learns what processes I use the most. I constantly use Bluetooth for smartwatches. For half a day I use headphones and S Pen a lot. This is what I need, so Bluetooth and cellular connection are always on. There was no charger in the box for $1300 phone. I had some old 15 watt chargers in the house. Samsung was kind enough to include cheap peasant Type-C cable inside, but my chargers are Type-A, so thank you Samsung for ultra premium inconveniences. Our planet of the apes still uses cobalt outdated technologies for batteries, but even apes laugh at Samsung <laughs> with their flagship 45 watt wired charger in 2024. Cosmic watchers will be upset to see this use of provided technologies. Second day of use, charged at 10 am to 80%. The day I used it with only one third of my usual tasks, so only three hours of screen on time. YouTube, testing of games, very lightweight use, nothing special. 49% were left, power saving mode was off the whole day. Third day. Now I have used power saving mode. I used the phone almost for full power of my work day with Bluetooth on. At 18.33 o'clock I got 49% and at the late evening 23.40 o'clock it were 45%. Cellular data with Bluetooth still on. Used it to reply on messages, make calls, browse the internet. So, battery even with 80% limit and power saving mode turned on will last all day with at least 20% left with 4 to 6 hours of screen on time. Nice. But there are some bad stuff that worries me that I want to express. For now, S24 Ultra have desaturated screen, but I believe it will be fixed during firmware update because the phone has this IP3 color gamut and it is not properly calibrated for now. And first of all, this S24 series is not a proper upgrade, it is more like S21 version 2++. Most of the advertised IE features are just online cloud smart features that after 2025 will be subscription based. I need more offline local models and neural features to truly call it AI phone. Now it is not even close. Some of the translation features I just can't use. 
because it lacks most of what I use. So it is 50% online cloud based and 50% not properly working. That needs years of polish. Next bad news are not related to Ultrafone, but Base S24. I wanted to buy one for my wife, but it has Exynos and have software limitations, like no switching between lenses in 4K 60 frames per second, also has almost no hardware improvements. 8 gigs of RAM for base and 12 gigs for Ultra was good 5 years ago, but now it is outdated. 256 gigabytes for $1300 with no memory expansion slot is just ridiculous. It must start from 512 gigs for $1,000 in my opinion, and $1,300 must be for 2 terabytes. This is 2024, officially. 45 wired charging without a charger in the box, and 50 watt wireless charging is just too slow. We will see 200 watts wired and 100 watt wireless this year. Almost no real upgrades in camera hardware. Samsung. Are you okay? But not everything is gloomy. I love build quality. Finally, 4K 120 frames per second mode, but no 480 frames and more, unfortunately. Want to go slow instead of smartphone 8K. Very fluid and fast UI and insane multitasking experience. Ability to take notes and use built-in styles is very handy. Ability to switch all lenses, including selfie and multicam. I love it. Very solid cameras that can do everything. Not exactly great, but more than good. All the time in all aspects. My conclusion. Should you buy this phone? For who will I recommend it? I need more testing to tell the details. But for now, I can say this. $1300 for 256 gigs is overpriced. You can find $600 to $800 flagships that can do better in some areas, especially in the photo department. This is niche and premium product. But if you find all the features that I discussed today useful or you have money to spend, you will get a very good device that looks and feels premium. Also, this whole video was recorded on the S24 Ultra in the room completely acoustically untreated. See you in the next videos.